Life is about your investments and your relationships. Your investment to determine how successful you turn out to be. Your relationships determine how happy they turn out to be. Hi, my name is George ACN. Welcome to another very exciting time where we'll be talking about um, something very important that you need to have. Life teachers, mentors, coaches, and role models. How these teachers, these life teachers can transform your life. I often tell people a few things that the world is filled with so much information. There's information everywhere. Information on the internet. And there's enough information to change your life. Enough updates to change your life. But why is it that your life isn't changed yet? So there's so much information but very little wisdom. And the problem usually is because we are so particular about information, we don't realize that information has to be taken to the next level for it to be effective in our lives. Information has to move from information to becoming knowledge. And that person, those people who move information from that information part to knowledge are called teachers. So a teacher takes scattered, disjointed information and they make that information usable knowledge. That's what teachers do. Beyond that, teachers also help you move talent to skill. You know, I'm of the very strong opinion that people have incredible potentials in them. And that with those potentials comes greatness. Let me just lay a certain foundation about infinite team. The number of people who cannot do anything themselves is very, very little. People have potentials that you I speak to you, you have something on your inside that can change your life. Let me define what talents are. What's a talent? When we say talent, when we say gift, what do we mean by that? A talent or a gift, you know, of course, you know that because you have talent, you need a teacher to move that talent or that skill you have or that talent you have into becoming a skill. So aside transforming information to usable knowledge, teachers also enable you to move your talent into skill. And what is valuable what makes you valuable in the marketplace what brings you the money is not the talent the raw untapped or you know not honed talent you have but the skill the possessed talent so let's quickly define what talent is talent and you have it is anything that you possess that is a work tool for your purpose and your assignment your equipment for purpose and assignment is your gifting and your talent so that's number one definition Another definition of talent is that your talent or gifting is anything that you possess that you can exchange or trade for fame or for fortune. So you bring it to the marketplace, all right, as a talent that has been processed into a skill, and you bring it to the marketplace, and then in exchange, you receive fame and you receive fortune. So that talent is. A talent also is anything that you can do with ease. It is your grace. It is your grace, it is your gift. Your talent is your ease, your talent is your grace, your talent is your grace, and your talent is your gift. And you have it on your side. The number of people who are incapacitated, who can't do or achieve anything, is very infinitesimal, very small. So if you pay attention to the gift that God has put in your inside, and you do something about it, your life can truly change. So what things do you do? What activities do you do with ease? What is your grease, you know, like the oil, your lubricant? When you have friction, the frictions we have in life as a result of a lack of lubricants. And the lubricants here talks about the grease, you know, that makes the engine of life, the engine activities of our life to be smooth. And that's why you really need to start paying attention to your lubricant. What's your lubricant? What will make your life easier? So that's your grace, your grace, and your gift. Your talent or your gifting is anything that you possess that people appreciate you and celebrate you. That's what your talent is. Maybe it is speaking. Maybe it is singing. Maybe it is acting. Whatever it is, you have something your inside that represents a seed of greatness that can make you very great. Of course, that you need a teacher, and we're going to talk about that shortly. You need a teacher to cultivate and help you develop from talent to skill. A talent is anything you possess that you can and you can do exceptionally well that provokes envy, criticism, and jealousy. 
and people look at you and say, why is he behaving like that? Is it because he can speak or is it because he can act or is it because he can dance or is it because he can organize? Whatever you possess that exceptionally well, that provokes envy, criticism and jealousy is your talent. That is striking. Your talent, and this is where I'm going to, your talent is anything that you possess that draws you closer to a teacher and draws or draws a teacher closer to you. Now you have certain capacities, certain um, potentials, and then because of those potentials, you suddenly see yourself being drawn to certain authors, being drawn to certain television programs, being drawn to certain pastors, being drawn to certain coaches. You want to be connected with them. You want to connect with them because of the potential you have. So that thing you possess that draws you towards them, or in the other way, draws them towards you. They see, they spot your ability and they want to help you out. That is indicative of the potential that you have. So because of this, you must understand that um, because we're drawn towards teachers and teachers are drawn towards us, teachers and our talents um, play a very major role. If you're going to move your talent from just being ordinary talents to becoming cutting-edge skills that is relevant, that is impactful, that will bring, bring solutions to you, that will enable you to meet your assignment and fulfill your purpose, you need to understand the place of teachers. That relationship is important. Like I said, life, first of all, is about the investment that we have. And secondly, life is about the quality of people around us, the relationships we have. And when we talk about relationships, we're looking at our uplines, our sidelines, and our downlines. Our uplines are people who are above us. Most of them are teachers, people who can give us grace, who can teach us, who can grow us. Our sidelines are our quality friends, our peers, our acquaintances, people who will work with us, you know, who inspire us, encourage us. Friendship means friends on the same ship going to a particular direction. And our downlines are people who follow us, people who are inspired by what we do. So we're going to not talk about our downlines. We're talking about people that are following us. When we look at that, we're discussing our ability to lead. We're talking today about our friends, our acquaintances, our peers, you know, our alliances, our partnerships. Then we're talking about people who who we can help and who help us, who inspire us. Today, I want us to look at our uplines, our life teachers. Now, what do these teachers do? These teachers, these life teachers help us to organize information. When information is organized, it becomes knowledge. Knowledge, 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 and knowledge is what we can use to achieve the results in our life. The next thing that lectures do, very beautiful thing, is that teachers also help us transform or help us cultivate our talent into becoming cutting-edge skills. It's that cutting-edge skills that we take to the marketplace that becomes very, very powerful. So teachers are important in your life. I want to ask a question to you. Do you have teachers? Do you have people that teach you in the different areas of your life? That's what we're discussing today. So we have three kinds of teachers that you may want to be exposed to. I'm going to list out a few of them. The first one, the first kind of teachers we have are role models. Who are role models? I have a role model, I have a role model. Now, a model whose role you admire. Now, these models have your kind of vision. These role models have your kind of gifting or talent. You know, but they have taken it to the next level, to the highest level possibly. They have developed themselves, they've honed their skills, and today they are celebrated. So you read their books, you you watch their tapes, you listen to their, their audio materials, you watch them on video, you see them from afar, and then you admire them. They inspire you. You want, you feel that they are your destiny, your future in living form. They are individuals who epitomize, who represent what your destiny should look like. They are called role models. So you know them, but they do not know you. There is a strong, they inspire you, and you have this um, connection with them, but they do not know them. So I want you to write down to take up your bio and write down who are your role models. I can easily predict your, your, your future, your destiny, by looking at who your role models are. And you can do that because, you see, your role models are a reflection of your future destiny. What I mean ro role, what role are you playing right now that somebody else is playing and is doing it excellently and is being celebrated so the challenge role models is that you know them but they don't know you so there is a relationship deficiency there's a problem you know them but they don't know you so if as great as role models are you need to have them in your life read their books watch their tapes they 
don't know you. And that leads us to something very important, to the second kind of teachers, life teachers that can impact our lives, that can help us organize information and make information to workable, usable skills, um, to knowledge, to help us transform our talents, the raw talents we have into cutting edge and relevant skills. The next kind of teachers that we need in our lives are coaches. Now, the difference between a role model and a coach, one of the major differences is that a coach or a life coach has a relationship with you. He has a relationship. So in other words, you know this coach and the coach knows you. There was a connection. There is a relationship. Now, in the other case, the role model, you don't know the role. You don't know the role model. Or you know the role model, but the role model doesn't know you. So now, what's it about a coach? So most times, a lot of times, a coach may not have your kind of vision, may not have your kind of gifting or your ability, but your coach is trained and has the capacity to bring out the best in you. He has put together a system, he has uh, technology, he has techniques, he has principles, he has ideas that if you walk through, if you go to the regimen and the routine and the principles, you will become the best you can be. And when we talk about coaches, we can look at it in a the football settings most of the time one well, of the greatest coaches were not fantastic footballers were not world best footballers they may not have that exceptional skills as players have but they have the ability to bring out the best to organize them to bring out the best potential to place them appropriately in, the, in their position that the best, best fits them and you also see um coaching in the choir you go to the choir the person who leads the choir who organizes the choir master is not necessarily the best singer but he has the best way of bringing out the best in the choir in the tenor and also the uh, and then also in the instrumentalist so coaches don't necessarily have your kind of talent or your kind of vision but they have the ability to bring out the best in you so the question i want to ask you is who are your coaches and, and again the difference between a coach and a, and a role model is that they have a relationship with you and this is very vital who have you um so the thing about um about um like role models that they inspire you that it's the relationship is very inspirational you know them and they inspire you the thing about coaches is that they don't necessarily inspire you yes there's an inspirational element in that interaction but most of the time they instruct you so role modeling is inspirational coaching is instructional because you need to run on instructions for you to be able to become all that you're supposed to be i, I know if you think of um uh, uh, a certain very very powerful guy called sir Alex Ferguson. He was the coach of Manchester United between 1986 to 2013. He had fantastic achievements to his award. He had 38 um, trophies to his award. He had he won 20 league titles for Manchester United. He won two Champions Leagues for Manchester United. He won 894 games. I mean, he's a knight who is called Sir Alex Ferguson, and he played and managed 1,498 games. Amazing figure. So he served as a coach. Was he a fantastic footballer in his time? No, but he was able to just raise a lot of people. He raised a you know, he discovered, spotted from FC Porto, um, Ronald, um, Cristiano Ronaldo, and developed him to become the world best player. Ronaldo was sold to Real Madrid and also became world best player and won many Champions League. You know, a lot of things. So you need to have the coach, a coaching experience in your life. Not just have role models, not just read books, and you need to have a coaching experience in your life. Now, there are two kinds of coaches. And for those of you who follow me carefully, I've talked to you about the two kinds of coaches that we have. We have a coach A and we have a coach B. Now, who is a coach A? A coach A is just a metaphor or a description of people who are not very hard on you, who will want to help you at your pace. You know, you need, probably need to have that experience in your relationship, in your business, whatever. So you work at your pace and they groom you and they help you. Eventually, they will help you become what you're supposed to be. Now, we have another kind of coach called the coach B. Now, coach B is quite different, a little harder, a little sterner, and he's more disciplined. He puts you into rigorous, rigorous training. And the idea basically is to get you to become the best you are. Let me give you a, an example I share all the time when I if ever explain coach A and coach B. So your goal is to become an Olympic champion. You want to win a gold medal in the um, in the championships. And then you want, because this guy is a runner. This coach is a runner. He's trained greatest runners, uh, perhaps Usain Bolt. And then you, you want him to train you. You meet him, 
the coach A now, and you tell him about your goal. He's excited with you. And he tells you, okay, we're going to have to come tomorrow by 5.30 a.m. so we can go to the field and do some running and training. And I wish you come around so we can help you. Your goal is possible. You can win the Olympics. You show up the next morning by 6 a.m. instead of 5.30 a.m. with excuses. And he said, my family, I have to take care of my family, blah, 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 blah. And then this guy's like, okay, no problem. Let's start going. You go ahead and you do your training. That's Coach E. Eventually, you, you know, day of the running of the game, he tells you, okay, you know what, just go out there. It's your first trial. Give it a shot. Do your best. Whatever happens, you can only get better. That's the Coach A experience. That's a Coach A. Now, for Coach B, Coach B is totally different. Coach B, come, you go and meet a Coach B, and the Coach B doesn't have your time or is too expensive to work with. He tells you, look, you cannot afford to pay me to put you through this process or I'm so busy or sometimes he can be very critical I, I don't think you have the capacity to become all I supposed to be all right and then you plead with him and say please I want to be an Olympic gold medal I want to win this gold medal please can you assist me and help me eventually he says okay no problem see me tomorrow in this field by 5 30 a.m. so the next morning you show up by 6 a.m. with excuses and it's like, I told you already that you don't have the capacity to be the champion I think you should be. And therefore, I'm not going to train you today. And then you're pleading, you're giving excuses. It tells you you don't have that capacity. And, and you, you insist on doing the training. You say, no, I can't train you. Even if you're paid, I can't train you today. And it tells you, okay, you know what? Come tomorrow by 6 a.m., you know, by 6 a.m. or 5.30 a.m. now, 5.30 a.m. And make sure you come here and I'm going to train you. Would you come the following day? Obviously, you would because you had that bad experience. You didn't train you the first day. You come the next day by 5.30 a.m. On the day of the competition, you want to race. He tells you, you know what, guys? I don't accept anything but the best. As you take out, as you begin to run, make sure that you win. He said that you win or you win. If you take second position, keep running. Don't come to me. You must take first position. Now, that kind of experience or that kind of coaching experience, Coach B experience, may be very difficult and hard. But for peak performance and for the being for being the best of yourself, for bringing out peak performance, optimal performance, you probably need a Coach B experience. For public speaking, for your finances, for your relationship, you need a coaching experience. Does it make sense to you? Again, understand that life teachers, role models, what they do basically is that they help you organize information Number two, life teachers help you transform talents into skill. What truly makes you valuable in the marketplace is not your talent, but your skill. So we have talked about role models and now we're talking about coaches. Now, let's look at the third kind of teachers that we have. The third kind of teachers we have are called mentors. I know you've heard the word mentor, mentor, be my mentor, be my mentor. Who is a mentor? In, now, the word mentor is um, coined from a certain Greek mythology. And, you know, Greek mythology, the man mentor was the uh, fellow who trained King Odysseus' son. King Odysseus was traveling for 10 years, some would say 20 years, to go fight war, um, one of which was the Trojan War. And when he was traveling, he, he was going to leave his wife and his son. And so he left his son to his trusted friend. His trusted friend was Mentor. Name was Mentor. He said, Mentor, train my son to become the king he's supposed to be. Inspire him and all of that. And that's what exactly happened. Okay. This trusted friend was also a prince, a royalty of noble stock. And then he was able to do that. 20 years. So that's where the term mentor comes from. So who is a mentor in a literal sense today? A mentor is somebody who has a similar ability or similar talent like you do. A mentor also has your kind of vision, maybe something similar. He is the living expression of your future. Just like the, just like the role model. Now the difference between um, a mentor and a coach is that a coach may not have your kind of ability, but the mentor 100% of the time has your kind of ability and your kind of vision. The difference between a mentor and a role model is that a role model, you know the role model, but the role model does not know you. So there's, there's no relationship between you and your role model in terms of intimate relationship, as in you don't have that interaction. But your mentor has a relationship with you just as much as you have a relationship with him. So you go meet him and say, I want you to be my mentor. And then he agrees. And this can be very challenging. That forms a relationship. Now, both the role model and the mentor inspire you. The coach instructs you. 
So they have similar um, talent and a lot of them, the mentors, also have grown their talent into an appreciable level. They have developed, developed a relationship with you and so they can truly help you. Does this make sense with you? Now, who is a mentor? A mentor is someone who impacts wisdom to someone with less experience. So he can impact wisdom to you. He can give you wisdom. Someone who has your kind of ability and has developed it to an admirable stage, a mentor is also a teacher. Now, there's a challenge, and I'm going to talk about that when it comes to mentorship and you. The challenge is the relationship. The relationship can become very familiar, and I'm going to talk about that shortly. But let me give you an example of a typical mentor, mentee, some will say mentor, mentee, some will say mentor, protege kind of relationship. I'm sure you've heard of um, Fela Durutoy. Fela Durutoy is in my industry. His name is um, Fela Durutoy is in my industry, an amazing guy who contested for Nigeria uh, presidency in uh, 2019, life transforming speaker, nation builder. And he was able to raise another guy in the consulting HR business by the name Steve Harris. I mean, you want to go go hear that story, an amazing mentor-mentee kind of relationship. Fantastic relationship. Now, um, Steve Harris has grown to become this, his own guy and has moved on with stuff. All right. So what is the challenge that I said earlier about um, mentorship? You see, it's very easy because of the relationship you have with the mentee. It's very, very easy for you to become too familiar with your mentor. So write that word familiarity. And they say that familiarity breeds disrespect. It's very easy for you to become very familiar with your mentor. It's very easy for you to move that relationship from being a mentor mentee relationship to becoming a friendship relationship. But that is not what you want to happen. Because the moment you move from mentor mentee, you stop learning from your mentor. You need to get to the point in your life where you can look and say, you know what, this guy is my mentor. So one of the things to do is that even though you have a relationship with your mentor, create and keep a healthy distance between you and your mentor. Keep a healthy distance so that you don't become too familiar. Your friends are not your mentors. Your friends love you the way you are. They will accept you the way you are. But your mentor loves you too much to leave you the way you are. So you need to give him, you need to give him the permission to instruct, to help, and to guide you. In some cases, and I want you to pay attention to this, your mentors are so busy pursuing their goals, so busy pursuing their vision, so busy pursuing their project, and then you, you come into their life. And then you are telling them you want them to mentor you. And, you know, sometimes you can get disappointed because they're pursuing their goals and you want them to pay attention to your own vision, your own goals. That's not how to approach a mentor-mentee relationship. One of the things to do that will help you, and I trust that will help you, is that when it comes to mentor-mentee, find a place and a spot in the vision, in the project that the mentor is doing, and do something in that regard. Help him. Because when you volunteer and you help him, he will reciprocate in also looking at what you're doing. Another way to quickly learn from your mentor is to learn by observation. Because most times, what mentors give us is the inspirational element of that relationship. So you might not necessarily, he might not tell you this is what I'm doing. He will just, by observing his activities, his schedule, his routine, his habits, his patterns, you can extract and decode information that will help you. So that's one thing about mentors. Though there's a relationship, you may not have that thing. You know, sometimes you can be very, can be very funny. Now, that's not the same thing with a coach. A coach has a relationship with you. Most times, a coach is paid. You pay a coach to show you, give you instructions and put you through a retreat routine. And so he puts you through a guide, he has a system, he has a nice knowledge that you can use to achieve your kind of goals. So you need to be very careful about mentors, you know. Uh, mentors and, and mentees have, I, I heard this from Dr. Miles Monroe of Blessed Memory, and it really got me striking. You see, mentors, mentees pursue, mentees pursue, mentors choose. Mentees pursue, mentors choose. Your mentor is not supposed to accept you. Okay, he's a liberty. You're the one looking for, so you keep pursuing until you get when you see somebody that you admire and um, you want to be a part of your life, you pursue the person. Why is relationship important? Your next level is tied to somebody. Your next level in life is tied to someone. Your golden opportunity is tied to somebody. Your next connection is tied to somebody. You know, your direction, your next, your direction, your future is tied to somebody. And one of the things you also get to realize about the interaction between you and your and your mentor is that by the time you get close to him, 
you start, you start realizing that he's a flawed man. If you can't work with flawed people, you can't make progress in life. You need to understand that they will be flawed. They will have their own issues. You will suddenly realize, you know, now, this guy is a, is a normal human being. It's a human being who is especially exceptionally grace, who is principled and who has achieved his goals. So you observe that in them. And, and you've got to be very careful. Now, let me talk a little about, because we had these interactions on WhatsApp and also had these interactions on Facebook about if you are, if you're a lady and you'd have a man who is your mentor, you've got to be very careful about that. Um, yeah, there are cases like that where you're a lady, a, la a woman is you know, um, who's connected, you know, to a man who is a mentor. Now, you've got to be careful because when you get in that relationship, that space, if you're not careful because of the bond, the mentor can take advantage of that relationship because, you see, you're very open to him and then you can fall prey to sexual, his sexual advances. And you, see, you see those kind of issues. You see people who are pastors of a certain lady and then all of a sudden they are going intimate with them. It happens, it occurs very often. And that's why if your lady and your, your, mentor, your mentor is the opposite sex, you want to, don't say, you know, he's a strong man, he's a titling person. No, no, no. You want to, don't trust your emotion when it comes to that, especially when it comes to a mentor mentee relationship. The strong, the bond can be very strong. You've got to keep a healthy and, you know, healthy distance from that mentor. Very careful about that mentor. When you, if you engage in any sexual intimacy with your mentor, it will change the dynamics. It would really change the dynamics, both for the mentor, he will not be able to teach you the way he should, and for you, your perception of that mentor will change. So you've got to be careful about how you handle um, intimacy. Same thing with a woman and a man, a man looking out for a lady who serves as a mentor. It's got to be, you apply wisdom in that regard. You know, so mentorship is so very important. So why have a mentor? Why have mentors? I'm going to give you a few things that you can write down that will help you. Number one, you want to have a mentor because you're learning from experiences. You see, um, experience is learning from your own mistakes. Wisdom is learning from your other people's mistakes and avoiding them. I like to repeat it. Um, experience is learning from your own mistakes, which is not bad. But wisdom is learning from other people's mistakes and totally avoiding. So one of the benefits of mentorship is that you learn from the person's experience. And that is fantastic. Number two, if you are in a quality mentoral relationship, you're going to get feedback from the person. You tell you, okay, you're not doing this right. Do it like this. You get, you get access to feedback. I will help you and, and grow. Now, another thing, beautiful thing about mentorship and you as a mentee is that you have access to people's ideas, to his ideas, to his vision and to his plans, and it will help you to guide, it will help guide you to doing whatever it is that you're doing. Now, mentors, real mentors who really help their mentees, help you gain proficiency, help you develop skills. Like I said earlier, that it's not enough to be talented. You've got to move from talent to exceptional, the exceptional person. Nobody's looking for, oh, he's talented. People are looking for, oh, he's exceptional. Oh, he's gifted. Else your talent, being talented will become um, something not good for you. So mentors help you gain proficiency, you know, and this is a beautiful part of our mentorship. If you, if you build a strong mentoral relationship, you know, ment strong mentoral relationship, Person, a mentor can recommend and introduce you. He can introduce you to his platform. Don't go joining a mentor because you want him to introduce you to his platform. Go there to learn initially. But if you build that relationship strongly, a mentor can introduce you to his platform. I've had people come to me, I want a mentor, and all of a sudden they want to have access to my, my resources. They want, and I'm looking at these guys, and this relationship is moving from being mentoral to becoming um, exploitative. They want to take advantage. And I sense it must be, and I resist and all of a sudden I become, I, 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 I have cold feet. You've got to be careful about that stuff. If I see a lot of people want to come, they, are part, they want you to be their friends, not because really they want, they want to take advantage and they insist that you help them. It's not the smartest thing to do. It's not the smartest thing to do. Don't go that route, all right? Don't go that route. It's not the best. You know, some people come to you and say they want you. I've had that many times with me, and I look at them. So I want to be mentor. I say, I tell them, I want you to be my mentor. I tell them, I consider that a very great privilege because I have a lot of people I work with. I have a lot of people who consider me as a mentor, and and I tell them again. I say, look, guys, we can work together. But now all of a sudden, they switch from that mentoral relationship 
into wanting me to be their friend. You know, it doesn't make sense. You want me to be your friend, but you came first as a mentor. Your mentor is not your friend. Don't go that route. Go look for your friend. Don't try to, you know, no, no, it doesn't work that way. I, I have mentors who I respect so much and I don't allow it to slip into friendship. For example, I don't advise them. Whatever they are doing is working for them. Even if you consider it as a mistake, it is not. It is you that's thinking it's a mistake. For them, it's working, it's producing. You don't advise your mentor. Let them do what they are doing. Let them make their mistakes. Let them do what they are doing. You don't advise or suggest. Let them be. You came to learn something. Get what you're going, going to learn and move away from that. And that's one thing I noticed that a lot of people don't do. They don't know how to manage that moving from friendship to mentorship. You've got to be very careful. Don't place a demand on your mentor to recommend you, uh, you know. And, you know, sometimes we, mentees also have issues. They Because they have too much expectations and the mentors are not giving them the kind of things they're expecting, they now call their mentors tormentors. They say, ah, this guy's a tormentor, you know. It doesn't make sense. Mentors choose, you pursue. You get what, when I, there's a mentor, I don't want to mention his name. When I went to meet this guy, the guy didn't give me space in his life. I kept pursuing, I kept pursuing, I kept, I felt hurt sometimes, but I kept until I got what I wanted to get. I needed to know a few things, and eventually I got close to him today. He's in my town, and he's giving me a call. Oh, George, where are you? And then we have interactions and we meet. When I'm in Lagos with him, I, I call him and I go to his house and we can interact. It took me some time to be able to have access like that. So you've got to be very careful about how you manage your, um, for example, don't ask your mentor for money. You know, it's a total error. It's a total error. Got into, got, the person gives you access. The greatest gift your mentor can give you, or even your role model, because your role model can eventually become a mentor if you pursue it long enough, is the access he has given to you. He's giving you access, and then that's great enough. You have access to his private life, all right? You know, you need to be very careful. You need to maintain honor. You see, honor will help your vision. I'll explain what I mean by that. When you have honor, when you honor a person, you see things that can help you. Your eyes will be open to seeing things that can help you in your destiny, help you in your future. But when you become too familiar and then the, your level of honor reduces, you stop seeing things that can help you. So honor will help your vision as a mentee. It will help you. So for you to have honor, make sure as you engage that relationship, realize that that man is a human being. He will be flawed. But also realize that if you keep that honor, if you consciously train yourself to honor that person, you know, you will see the things you are looking for. Don't receive, don't take, don't ask. Rather, whatever you want to do, give. Give support his, with your time, your service is, is what he's doing, and then give. And you see that somehow he will support you, will ask you, will advise you. This is a very simple way to get it. Eventually, he would introduce you to his platform. That will happen naturally. And if it doesn't happen, you did not come to get introduction. You came to learn to see your future in human So we need to begin to appreciate mentors in our lives. We need to begin to appreciate role models in our lives. We need to begin to appreciate life coaches. You need to start having this because the quality of your life is dependent, heavily dependent on the quality of people around you. Your upline, your, you know, your upline, your sidelines, and your downlines. Why should you, you know, now who should be your mentor? Now let me ask you, let me ask you this because this is very important. Who should be your mentor? Because, you know, so John has said, have a mentor, have a life coach, or have a, uh, a role model. You know, personally, I'm talking a lot about mentors because it's very easy for even your coach to be a mentor because your coach can also be a mentor. All right? When he gives you instructions, he must become a mentor. Uh, you know, so who should be your mentor? Number one. Write this down if you're taking down notes. Someone who has sufficient experience. Don't get involved with somebody who doesn't have sufficient experience in that your area uh, that you are trying to pursue. That's number one. Number two, who should be your mentor? Someone who has failed and learned. Stop looking at for people who have just succeeded, succeeded. Look at someone who has failed, has a failure experience, and though he failed, he's learned from that experience and is stronger. That's who you should be a mentor. Number three, who should be your mentor? Somebody who has succeeded, should have succeeded. Some level of success, that's the person you should consider your mentor. Number three, and number four, someone who is willing to form a relationship with you. So you meet a person and you request for mentorship and he does not agree to mentor you. There's only to pursue it. There's only to push it too far. Because you see, mentors choose, mentees pursue. 
there's a relationship that needs to be formed and that will only happen um, uh, when you when he agrees so how do you now treat your mentors i'm going to give you a few things i already mentioned it earlier number one understand is also human number two understand that he's not your friend and then buy and patronize his works now this is side let me just digress a bit and you know i thought about it yesterday throughout yesterday i was thinking about it um, and I want to help you out. It will help you for those of you who are in ministry, for those of you who are into capacity building, who do events, and who want to invite people to come for your events. All right, so I don't say this. This is away from the thought I'm sharing, but this is somewhat similar. Listen to this very carefully. You want to host um, a George ACN. Okay, let me let me not use myself so it doesn't look as if I'm trying to patronize myself. You want to invite a Steve Harris. Steve Harris is a top speaker in the world to come for your event. One, you don't have the financial capacity to invite him. And you still want to invite him. All right? Unless you, you know a mentee or you know someone who has a relationship with him, don't go about that. Don't go about that. Don't do that. You know, invite someone at your level and then grow your capacity to the point where you can invite him. All right? Don't do that. Don't get yourself messed. Don't mess yourself up in that regard. I don't think it's a smart way. Invite. Some invite me and say, I want you to come. And I tell them, ask them, so what's the plan? They want me to come for free. They also want me to come for next to nothing. And I tell I can't do that. I can't come for your event for next to nothing. Because I don't want, number one, you're not ready for me. And number two, you don't have a relationship. So if you want to invite a Steve Harris to come at next to nothing, or then you need to find a way to build a relationship with him. Build a relationship with him. Over time, he would reciprocate. He would be. He would come for events. I know a certain friend who wanted to uh, write a book with a certain top speaker in Nigeria, um, top person in Nigeria. This guy, this speaker was putting together a one a five thousand dollar event training. And what this mentee did, this person who was pursuing him, um, eventually he paid for the one point five. He paid one point five million. At that time, it was five thousand dollars. He paid one point five million. Attended, went, flew all the way to Lagos, got to Charlton. I was part of the three days training, and of course, if you pay that kind of money to this fellow, that man observing was observing who had paid one point five million naira. And I mean, they formed a strong relationship. Later on, it will blow something to the point where they wrote a book together. Imagine if so. If you want to have access to certain people who you want to invite in the future, start to patronize them, attend their school, buy their books. There's certain people who I've worked with over the years who, if they call me today, if I would I will not start asking for money. You need to understand this dynamic. It will help you in 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 building relationships and growing your business and building strong relationships. Okay, so if you're not ready. To invite a certain pastor to come to your church or a certain minister or a certain speaker don't if you're not ready financially don't go about it and you know if you want to insist on that person find a way to first build a relationship don't demand for something that you have not invested in i don't know if this makes any any sense at all to you you need to have a mentor you really need to have a life coach in your life because they'll do two things one they will help you organize information there's so much information out there so much information but very little wisdom very little results there's so much information that can help you to become successful there's so much information out there that can help you to become a great public speaker on youtube and but you need a teacher to transform information into organized knowledge into relevant knowledge into systematic knowledge that is a challenge look out for either a coach I recommend you look for a coach if you can find a mentor someone who is truly epitomizing what you're doing look out for a coach who you can form a relationship with pay the coach to put you through a routine a system that will help you succeed look out for a mentor somebody who has the capacity to work with you who is doing what he's doing and who can guide you to the process or look out for role models if you have these quality people in your life your life will make a lot of sense and I, I'm sure that I've made a lot of sense to you in this regard. So I'll leave you with this very powerful thought. Stop pursuing success. Pursue mastery and success will pursue you. Stop pursuing success. Pursue mastery and success will pursue you. How do you pursue mastery? You pursue mastery by submitting and working with the masters. Thank you. If you're watching this on YouTube, I'd like you to like the uh, click on the not notification button and also make sure that you 
click on the um, notification button and subscribe button so that every time there's a new video you'll be updated if you're watching on Facebook like this page George ACN. you can actually go to georgeacn.com to get to see um, content to get to see how I can help you if you want me to be your coach or your mentor you can send a message to me through that website or through the whatever platforms you're watching this I look forward to working with you and God bless you